everybody. Um, let me know if you have any issues hearing me. I hope you don't. And make sure that my microphone is on the max. Yeah, I still have a little stuff. Um, hi, Tina, and hi, Ellen. This thing's not working yet. Okay, so um, this month I was able to do it uh, on the first Saturday of the month. I'm sorry for June, but uh, June had some issues, as you all know. Hi, Robin. Um, so what we are going to talk about today, number one, I'm going to update you with uh, what I have been doing, what I'm working on. Um, and then um, I will be talking a little bit because I got a lot of questions and a lot of messages and a lot of um, from uh, subscribers and followers. Um, that pertains on a more personal level, and that is um, how the heck do I keep going while I'm <laughs> uh, while I have so many issues? Um, because I'm not trying to put myself on a pedestal or anything. Hi, Janice. Um, the idea is that. Uh, I'm very happy that I get a lot of messages from people of how much I influence their lives. Uh, people like me who have disabilities, who have chronic pain and so on and so forth. But also I get a lot of times the questions about how do you keep going, you know? And I think that is pretty important, especially because my channel is essentially geared more towards uh, people who are either elderly and they um, try to cope with all kinds of uh, physical issues due to age or uh, people who have some type of disability and also have are hindered in the craft by their disability. Uh, let me see. Increase the volume. It's almost as the, at the max. Let me see if I can do something about the... This one. Okay, let me see. It is at the max. The max that I can uh, do. I hope you can hear me better. Because now I see I'm going in the reds. <laughs> okay. Hi, Phoenix. So, um, I know that this week I didn't uh, post yet um, a tutorial. It's going to come later this afternoon. I still have just a little bit to edit. Um, but, and I'll also show you the finished um, bracelets that we did with the, when I did the unboxing of the um, uh, Tiny Pandora's uh, bangle kit. Hi, Francoise. Thank you. Yes, I can put on makeup again. So, and it's gonna <laughs> go away again for a month <laughs> after the 18th. But I had, uh, so let's take it in order. When it comes to health and stuff, I had my uh, last post up for the right eye yesterday, and the doctor is absolutely thrilled. Hi, Sonia, and um, I'm scheduled on the 18th for the surgery on the left eye. And that means that until the, I think it's going to be like the 8th of August, that's when I'm going to get the final prescription for close uh, eyeglasses. But I will be finally able to see. And the other thing that's going to be awesome is that... Um, if before March I was still able to drive myself to close stores, you know, I still had some independence since much since the cataracts was and then uh, awesome. 
and then uh, with the surgery being able to see with one eye and not with the other and not having any depth perception I cannot drive myself anywhere so I'm completely dependent uh, uh, on friends to drive me here and there and so finally that's going to be a little bit better uh, but um, that made a lot of things uh, easier. I still have a lot of backup because for two weeks after the surgery, I was not allowed to do any kind of sanding and buffing for fear of uh, getting any kind of microscopic stuff in my eye. Hi, Chris. Um, then... The other thing is that uh, I didn't have time to go get an x-ray on my shoulder. That keeps hurting me, but we'll see. After the surgeries, we'll see what's going on there. The babies are okay, and I hope to uh, post some more videos of them. I'm not posting really uh, on YouTube, but if you follow me on Facebook, you know that I'm posting a lot of babies, fur babies, uh, videos and photos. Uh, then, uh, when it comes to what I've been doing, I was finally able to, I have one more thing to fix, and that's going to be fixed tomorrow. I got, uh, I finally got all the setup. There are three uh, cameras, one that's over the table, one that's the one that I'm looking at right now, and one that is right here above the pasta machine. So, even during lives, I would be able to uh, easily switch from one to the other and to the monitor if I want to show you something. I was finally able to get a good quality uh, microphone, a professional microphone, and uh, the only thing that I'm still waiting on is another arm for this camera because uh, I don't know the way that they made it. You cannot use a regular mount for it because it gets screwed in differently so you need a gooseneck and the gooseneck I ordered you need to be a freaking weightlifter to use it I think it's made for tanks not for web cameras because it's like uh, hold on okay th this <coughs> See, and then it, you put it in place and then it goes back where, where it wants to be. So, uh, I already did a return on it. Uh, UPS will be here Monday to pick it up, but, and I ordered another one that should be here tomorrow. So, <laughs> that's my last thing to do. Uh, I'm working on uh, finishing the setup for the kitchen where I have the sanding and buffing stations. So I won't have to keep bringing stuff here and putting it back in the kitchen. I'll be able to tape in the kitchen when it comes to the sanding and buffing uh, part of tutorials. So that's going and also on baking and other things uh, because that's where I do, for example, my when I where I varnish my beads and I leave them there on the table and it's going to make things so, so much easier. And the other thing, if you, some of you have noticed, because some of you st started following me, I finally was able to get a smartphone, so now my Instagram account is active. <laughs> uh, so I am really, really happy about all these happenings, and hopefully I'll be able to catch up soon. I'm still in the process of sanding and buffing, trying to catch up before the 18th of August when I do that. <laughs> And the other surgery, but hopefully after the 8th of August, nothing will happen. Let's pray. Um, and hopefully Whisper will be okay too. Um, I had some bad happenings this past month when it comes to... One was about Whisper CBD oil, where the local CBD place where I was going... <laughs> I went there, you know, to get normally. I've been uh, giving him the True Blue. Uh, that's done by the Blue Moon Company that's in Colorado. They are absolutely fabulous. They go organic and everything. And before this local stop uh, shop, I used to uh, buy for him 
from Lazarus Naturals. For the ones of you who don't know, Whisper has been my, it's my dog, it's my whippet, has been diagnosed in October 2017 with liver cancer and was given two months to live. And uh, I switched him to a low protein, low fat, low carb, <laughs> home cooked diet and CBD oil. And he's still alive and kicking and happy and playing. And um, so as I was saying, I started buying for him the CBD oil on, online and then I found this local shop. So I went to get his bacon tuna flavored CBD oil and they're like, oh yeah, but you know, we are not, uh, uh, we don't have it anymore in two, 250 milligrams, we have it in 300 milligrams. And then we have another one that's like 300 milligrams, we started carrying. Okay, so I get them, I trusted the guys, I didn't even check. I get home. On the bottle of, uh, so toted what they started carrying, there was no mention of CBD. Absolutely none. It was just hemp, <coughs> hemp tincture, not even hemp extract. You know, and there's a huge difference between a hemp tincture, a hemp extract, and something that actually has CBD. It has to be noted there. And then uh, when I look at the 300 milligrams thing that they started carrying instead of 250 milligrams, it was not true blue anymore. It was their own thing that did not look, looked very weird green. They just used the same colors on the label as the Blue Moon product. Oh, and the, I did a, a whole thing online and you know why uh, reported them to the Better Business Bureau and it, this is this is absolutely unacceptable I'm not buying from them and if you are in the area don't buy from CBD plus because they are crooks uh, the other issue I have I had and I will post a video soon with to show you all the email exchanges uh, finally, it was the cane slicer that a friend got for me from Lucy Clay Tools. And uh, some of you probably watched the, the video that I initially made. What it comes to, to, to make the story short, long story short, because you'll see the video. Uh, the idea is that my friend purchased for me um, an assembled cane slicer for $198 and they sent a non-assembled one uh, that looked like somebody had tried to assemble uh, that cost $148 and it was broken very poorly shipped in the course of email exchanges they were very rude uh, not only that but when they shipped uh, they sent me the invoice with all my friends financial information including bank account and routing number and they didn't seem at all faced by that fact even when i brought it to their attention on the contrary they sent me again the the proof that they returned the money to my friend you'll see i mean it's unbelievable anyway on the other hand, I've been experimenting and doing a lot of testing with three types of clay. One is the female leather. Uh, hopefully, I'll be able to work on it uh, this coming week because I have two beautiful uh, leather uh, bracelets uh, designed already and everything. One will be for YouTube. One will be for my sponsors. Uh, the other one is the... Um, um, Cernit Metallics and in that one also I have done uh, some extensive testing because I want to do a, a little bit more encompassing thing that will uh, get all the metallic pearlescent clays I mean I want to show you remember I did two years ago a comparison between um, uh, Primo, uh, Cernit, and Pardo. And I want this time to do a full thing, you know, with Primo, Cernit, Pardo, uh, Fimo, and Cato. And to show how good they are each for various 
uh, things because uh, as much as I am totally thrilled by the new Cernit Metallics nevertheless they are not as good as remember what I've always said that each clay is good for a different thing the workhorse would be primo that's pretty much good for everything but doesn't excel in anything <laughs> um, and uh, Pardo is good, better for some things Cernity is better for other things Fimo is better for other things Kato is better for other things and I've been working on that um, the other thing that I just got is the new Cernit Opaline and with the and I'm also been working with uh, the Cerny Translucence because I want to do this uh, with the Cerny Translucence. I want to do again another encompassing thing with uh, different brands of Translucence and especially uh, geared more towards making four gemstones. Which of them works the best for what type of four gemstones? I'm not going, going to include Kato in this one because uh, as some of you know Kato translucent is not that terrific. But with the Cernit Opaline, I'm also experimenting because I want to see exactly what is the difference. I know that the Opaline is supposed to be an extension, colored extension of the porcelain white and that is that uh, to have some trans more translucency in it than the regular number one and what i want to do is to see especially for flowers uh how does it look i'm going to make the same exact flower in uh, cerny number one in cerny number one mixed with translucent and in uh, cerny topoline and we'll see how each of them uh the difference and how if opaline is better i love the colors and uh, the good part is that uh, a lot of the opaline colors are um, you can find them in the number one so that is absolutely fabulous so i got a pretty big stash of uh, of cernit and i have a lot to play with and um, also my, i'm working on several uh, four gemstones some of them I have made them before but there would be um, either a new version or the same version that I showed before but this time with Cernit or with uh, Pardo or with both and um, so this would be pretty much what I've been working on I have a few more things that have been on the back burner i already have the um, all the materials for them i just because how can i tell you it's like a vicious circle okay i have a whole bunch of stuff still to uh, sand and buff to upload in the store to do the destashes and everything because of that one of my countertops and my kitchen table are piled up until I finish that and I free them up, I cannot uh, put my uh, photo booth in place to take photos and be able to, you know, upload in the store. But and not only that, one of the, these uh, tutorials, one of these experiments uh, involves some type of chemical reaction that I need to take uh, photos every couple hours and it has to be free and be able to put the camera on the tripod and not move it so you can see how stuff develops um, then i have again materials for certain experiments with resin with colors with alcohol inks i do need to get the new the only thing that i didn't get yet um, are the new uh, pinata colors I didn't order those yet. Uh, Trish has ordered them and, and as soon as she gets them in the store, they'll be out. Hopefully she's going to uh, have the female leather soon as well. So this is what we are still waiting. Another thing that I've been experimenting with, um, I've ordered quite a few veiners from uh, aliexpress to try and find some uh, good veiners for flowers 
that would not be as expensive as you can find them on Amazon. And um, Trish is going to order them because the, the main problem with these veiners is that most of them, they are made for fondant. And fondant is way softer uh, than polymer clay. And it's valid not just for the veiners, but for the um, molds as well. And when you're trying to use them on polymer clay, when it comes to the veiners, uh, they would not leave a good enough impression. Or when it comes to the molds, because the molds are very squishy and polymer clay is way more um, um, firm than fondant, um, when you press the polymer clay in the mold, it squishes the details of the mold so you do not get a good uh, a good impression nobody's talking in the chat so <laughs> i was afraid that i stopped i stopped uh, broadcasting <laughs> um so i've been experimenting with that <coughs> excuse me then i've been uh, ordering also some uh, cutters to see which the which of them are the best and uh, we'll see uh, I'm still waiting for a few and also some textures and um, when it comes to textures I also did order some textures from cool tools and I'm going to show you in a few tutorials how to use them but just to give you an example I have like for example there are these uh, thank you Ellen <laughs> Uh, there are these uh, cool tools make some textures that are special most of cool tools textures Yeah, I got them from um, Robin I got the opaline clay from uh, clay factory as I, as I told you and because I've been messaging back and forth <coughs> Excuse me and there's a lot of pollen in the air and I have a little bit of a um <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Francois. I have a little bit of a um, nasal drip, post nasal drip, so I'm I have the tendency to cough. Anyway, so I was saying, cool tools. Most of their textures are geared more towards uh, PMC, the precious metal clay. And uh, among all these lines of textures that they have, uh, there are some that are special for jewelry. And they have exceptionally fine lines. And I um, already started working on one of the tutorials. Remember when I was telling you that I'm going to make... Uh, and this, you don't have to make it by my Peter Site tutorial to make it with a Peter Site. But uh, let me try and pull this. Okay, I'm going to do some workout now. Okay. Uh, to give you an example, because if you remember, I said I was going to. Hold on, let me get my. This one smaller. Not the full thing. Hey, I just want to make it smaller. And there we go. Uh, and let me focus this so I can show you what I want, what I'm talking about. So, I was going to make this um, This is a four Peter site A red Namibian And why does it have this weird color? This is not normal color Hold on That's another thing I need to change Sorry. Not too much contrast. And there we go. Now it looks more normal. Looks too much. Okay, so the idea was that I was going to make a um, pretty jewelry, real jewelry uh, type um, a tutorial on um, using this uh, for Namibian Red Peter site. 
but you can do it with any kind of uh, four gemstone or another kind of cabochon and this is just a free form um, and I've been using one of those um, okay oh never mind <laughs> there's a delay in my the the screen on, <laughs> on YouTube just went dark <laughs> Uh, so this is made, it's a satin slice made with one of those uh, cool tool textures. And uh, it is in the style, you know, I, I did some pieces before inspired by the Constantino jewelry. I just love Constantino jewelry. Uh, and it's with the, it's hard to see in this light, but it's just uh, like gold on silver. And I'm going to make a few uh, pendants with this that can be used with any other kind of of uh, four gemstone. I just thought that the, this one looks good. I didn't have a proper size cabochon, uh, but if you you can do it with the uh, rhodochrosite, and remember I have a couple uh, tutorials on that. Uh, Larimar for Larimar works beautiful with it and a lot of other four uh, gemstones. And then I have um, many let me grab this again. Um, I have a few for Malachite uh, tutorials that are in the works and will be I only have a little bit to work on the that for Malachite uh, necklace just to put an attachment on it and a lot of stuff that has been on the back burner but I just had so much to catch up on um, for all that time before the surgery where I couldn't do stuff including a lot of the housekeeping uh, because I couldn't see you know and then the stuff that I couldn't do after the surgery because I wasn't allowed to bend and lift but to give you an example I spent a whole day I forgot if it was Tuesday or Wednesday uh, sorting and filing paperwork because I had a pile of paperwork that had accumulated since March hi uh, just because I couldn't file and sort it because I couldn't see I'm not sure how much um, you have realized that <laughs> pretty much since March I've been working half blind <laughs> uh, that's why it was so hard for me to to do stuff that's why I slowed so much and it was not as I said it was not so much a matter of uh, working with the clay because I, I still can work by feeling the main issue was uh, seeing the monitor because it was not anymore a, a matter of oh I see blurry um, then if I just tilt my eyeglasses and if I know I mean it was fog you know like trying to look through a steamed um, window hi Nunya hi Keldy nice to see you too and I'm glad you made it Nunya thank you Janice um, so yeah it's I'm still trying to catch up and uh, the I'm not whining in any way and we'll talk about this in a second uh, but the thing is that uh, just because I started getting my eyes issue fixed, it doesn't mean that all my other issues went away, <laughs> you know. So I, I'm still dealing with fatigue, I'm still dealing with pain, I'm still dealing with uh, all my other issues. And uh, because we are, we got here, let's get to my, the other point of this uh, live. Because, you know, and you probably got used to the fact that uh, a lot of times during my monthly chat, I do some pep talk, which is not really pep talk. It's just a matter of, uh, you know, how to cope with stuff. Um, so the question was, how do you keep doing what you're doing? Um, uh, I think it's essentially it's a matter of not giving up. Uh, but there are several mechanisms that I'm uh, 
Hi, Julia. Uh, that uh, I'm putting into practice, and uh, you have to think that I got here because uh, I got here during 10 years. I mean, it was uh, a struggle and it was a fight. Uh, but as I said, essentially, it's the, the thing, the, the matter of not giving up. Uh, Kelly, I'm not positive. <laughs> On the contrary. And I'm going to give you an example. Um, I'm not positive. I'm not an optimistic and I'm not a, a, a pessimist. I'm not an optimist and I'm not a pessimist. I'm a realist. I was talking to a friend of mine uh, who lives in Delaware and we've been friends. We never met in person, but fortunately, you know, with the way that the, the Internet has developed interpersonal relations, you can become really, really, really good friends with people across the country or across the world. Even if you don't meet them, you still can become the best of friends. Uh, and I have this friend who lives in Delaware, and oh gosh, we've been friends for I don't know, 12 years, 13, 14, I cannot even remember. Uh, and she is dealing with a lot of chronic pain herself. Uh, she just has been approved for disability after three years <laughs> of applying and reapplying. Um, and her main issue is uh, she's got... A plethora of issues but her main issue is with her knees that are completely destroyed and um, we were talking on the phone the other day and we were talking about um, this thing with things are going good so now I'm uh, getting ready because it's going to be something bad happening and as we were talking, you know, we were talking about the fact that we don't look at this in a pessimist way, you know, like, oh, it's impossible when stuff's going uh, good, is something bad is going to happen and spoil it. No, it's experience had shown us that every time <laughs> things started going better, Something happened that tried to get us, you know, to stop or push us back from what we were doing. And what we are doing, I don't know if, you, if I can convey the exact thing. It's not that we are all pessimistically waiting for the other shoe to drop. No, we are getting prepared on what to do when the shoe drops. <laughs> you know, so... We have the plan in place if this happens or if this happens or if this happens because one of those will happen because things are going too well. Does that make sense? <laughs> so uh, this is one of the examples of uh, not giving up. But it stems from uh, if you want... Uh, it's a paradigm shift. And you have to go, when you go through, when you start having a uh, chronic illness uh, that brings chronic pain or degenerative things. I mean, it's, it's the thing about uh, when you suffer of something that not only will not ever go away, but you know it will start getting worse and worse. Uh, there are several things, several approaches. Number one, you have to accept the fact that it is happening, that it will not get better, uh, that it will only get worse, and that uh, you need to learn how to cope with it. And you have to approach it as I said, not in a pessimistic way, not in a, oh, woe betide me, what am I going to do? My life is over, all I can do from now on is to just lay in bed and eat cereal and watch movies. And, uh, you know, be on my pity pot all the time. And not in the, uh, on a 
stupid, in my opinion, optimistic way. Oh, things are going to get better. I'm going to fight. No. Uh, yes, that is true. Uh, you have to be a realist. You have to kind of plan ahead. Okay, this is happening. This is it. I do not control it. I cannot control it because this is one of the most frightening things. Uh, and uh, it is for the human nature a very frightening thing when something happened that is out of your control. Uh, this is why people get so terrified about uh, natural uh, disasters because, because it's something that is out of your control. Um, about terminal illnesses, about uh, debilitating illnesses, about all kinds of things. Every time something happens that is out of your control, uh, the more out of your control it is, the more terrifying it is. And one of the mechanisms, as I said before, it is true that in, in some ways the fact that I do have a degree in psychology is helping you know, and the fact that I used to be a, a medical practitioner. Um, because it helps me understand certain mechanisms and also understand how uh, physical things influence the emotional things. And the thing is, as I was saying, you need to accept this is, it is, it is. Um, on the other hand, I wouldn't say like you, life is wonderful. No, it just is. For me, is. The life is. So, as I was saying, the more out of your control it is, uh, the more terrifying or the more depressing it can be. One of the things that um, I did when I was going through my cancer journey to hell, um because that's that's uh, when a cancer and Keldy knows and probably a lot of you know because it's cancer has started to be so rampant nowadays um it's super scary when scary when you get uh, the diagnosis of cancer it is something that is so out of your control that it's absolutely devastating and uh, one of the coping mechanisms would be to try and take a little bit of control. You can still control certain things. To give you an example, when my hair started falling uh, due to chemotherapy, um, I went ahead and I shaved it because I had control on that. I had control. I did not have control on the results of chemo. But I started actually looking forward to the time when I would have a shaved head and I would try a different type of makeup and wear those big hoop earrings and sporting my bold girl <laughs> uh, thing. And uh, I think that uh, some of you who are friends with me on... Uh, on Facebook have seen if you have looked in my photo archive but I'll show you uh, nevertheless because I can do the uh, I had I even made uh, an album taking photos every month when my hair started growing let me just get to it there we go and uh, but that was my way of uh, taking a little bit of control, you know. So uh, see, I did one photo every month to document how it was growing, and it was funny because I looked at one point I had like a little. Uh, a spot on the top of my head that was growing faster and uh, the rest was not but uh, anyway the the idea was that I chose to 
uh, shave my head. You know, that was something that I could control. And it did me a lot of good. You know. And it was funny, as I said, it was funny because I looked like one of those baby elephants. I had like a little, first I had like a little tuft, you know, <laughs> and the rest was not. And then, uh, uh, sorry, allergies. Uh, and then I had, because originally my hair is a uh, dark ash blonde, like dishwasher water uh, blonde. And uh, when it started growing after chemo, I had a black stripe here and here it came back gray <laughs> and then as it started growing because it starts growing uh, slower in the first couple months and then as time goes by it starts growing normally oh uh, after it started growing it started growing I had I think I had at least a dozen cowlicks <laughs> it was going in all directions so when it was long enough, I dyed it. That was another thing of controlling, you know. Uh, so in any situation, try and uh, get a little bit of control. Even if you, you cannot control what's going on, you can still try and find a little piece of control over something. Uh, hi, Sarah. Oh, my goodness. You are staying up late thank you um so if you find a little something that can make you have control that is very 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 important and the other very important thing is um the purpose you need to find a purpose as I said many times before, and I think that I talked about it in the that uh, compassion video I did two years ago. Um, if you want to destroy somebody, nothing can destroy somebody more than taking away their purpose. Hi, Sharon. Thank you. Oh, yeah, I, I forgot to tell you, I found that uh, the local grocery store a month ago there was on the clearance they had these little l'oreal uh, temporary uh, spray colors and they were a dollar so i went ahead and i got like four of them <laughs> and because i used to love when i had my hair long and i cut it short right before i opened the channel um because it was just too hard to take care of it but when i had my hair long i had always had it uh, dyed uh, bleached pretty much and uh, I had it done in opal you know with all kinds of colors and I was today because I need to dye my hair and I didn't have time for that so I was, I'm gonna just make it opally um, so to get back to the to the purpose thing if you really want to destroy a person uh, take away their purpose um, I had at one point uh, when I went to Romania back in 2014 after everything that happened with my family uh, in the last two weeks of me uh, being in Romania I stayed at a, a friend's uh, mother and she was one of the most depressed people I've met in my life and she was kind of destroying herself because what had happened, she had taken care, she was divorced for a long time. And she had taken care of her mother who had uh, terminal cancer for the last, f I don't know, it was like 10 years, something like that. And her mother had died like six or seven months prior to me going there. The thing is that she had all all the focus of her life was taking care of her mother when her mother died she had no more focus and she was unable to shift her focus towards something else and um, 
she was depressed. She had become a hypochondriac. She would be like, because she had diabetes and high blood pressure, and she would be like, oh, my blood sugar is too low. She would eat something, oh, my blood sugar is too high. She would give her an insulin, oh, my... She would get herself through all this just so she can uh, call the ambulance. You know, trying to... She was trying to shift her focus in a weird way. But not having a focus anymore or a, a purpose can completely destroy somebody. So try to find a purpose. Uh, for a long time before I wasn't able to to do it anymore, I did a lot of gardening. Uh, and any time that you do something that is either related to uh, nurturing or to creating, that is one of the best uh, focuses. Even if it you if you focus on your pet or on your garden or on making polymer clay. See the creation and polymer clay, it doesn't have to be polymer clay. You can work with the, the card making, you can do crocheting, you can do all kinds of things, but create, and that's going to give you a purpose in life. And um, even if you have a lot of issues doing it. Uh, to give you an example, there's a... Um, um, channel on YouTube uh, with a lady who is really 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 let me find her channel and I'll give it to you uh, she is very disabled she's in a wheelchair she has issues moving her hands uh, let me find her because I am subscribed and she still does a whole bunch of stuff where is she I'm subscribed to like, I don't know, 70 channels on YouTube, so it's hard to find something. Oh, goodness. I'll have to put it, not to, not to hold you, I'll have to put it later on uh, in the video description. Uh, so, even if it hurts, even if it... Um, if it is a pain literally to do it try to get it done okay try to do a little bit at a time and it will uh, help you don't have to aim for something very very complicated and that would be actually counterproductive especially if you have some physical issues uh, that would be counterproductive, um, but the best thing is to start small. Just because something is a basic technique, it doesn't mean that you cannot do something very, very beautiful with it. <laughs> Just because something is a beginner level. Okay, I was playing with a piece of clay and I dropped it. Next thing I'm going to step on it um, just oh no I didn't wrap it it's here uh, just because something is beginner level doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be meh. you can do and you know that a lot of times I do post beginner level tutorials and I show you how to make things that are don't require more than beginner knowledge and they still look gorgeous just don't aim too high too fast because that will be the recipe for disaster you won't be able to achieve it if you don't have uh, um, if you don't take it little by little I know Seamus came to tell me something as usual I know hey what can we do about it uh yes thank you um and if you are patient and you don't try to aim higher than your expertise 
you'll do just fine because again if you get frustrated if you get um, disappointed you won't feel the enthusiasm you won't, f you won't feel like doing anything and then you lo lose again a, a focus yes working on things and and it does push away the pain i'm not going to to lie to you while i was going through all those surgeries and chemo and stuff one of the things that kept me sane was uh playing online games and i'm not talking about facebook games I, i'm talking about like world of warcraft and guild wars 2 uh but it did uh help that's fine robin you can watch it later have a wonderful saturday uh, so that is very, very important. Um, another thing that I found uh, is when it comes to pain control, and I'm not trying to be in any way pat patronizing or pushy or anything, but uh, there are a few things that you need to take into consideration if you have a uh, chronic pain. Number one, exercising hurts. Hurts really bad. Uh, but you still nevertheless have to push yourself to do a little bit of exercising. Even if it is just plain walking, even if it is just uh, stretching. Uh, why? Because there are certain, number one, there are certain chemicals that get released in your brain that uh, help with pain perception. Uh, number two, because uh, due to chronic pain and other g degenerative illnesses, you will, no matter what, you will have some muscles and some joints degenerate and uh, make things and movements and everything uh, harder for you. But if you are careful and you exercise a bit the other areas of your body that are not affected by, uh, by all that, and even slightly the areas of your body that might be affected by that, it will make coping movement uh, easier and less painful. Even if in the beginning it will be, yeah, okay, you cannot run, you cannot jog, you cannot you can still walk it's hard to go out of the house fine what i do for 10 minutes three times a day i walk around my living room i just i cannot drive myself outside i cannot do i used to have a an elliptical on the porch i couldn't do any more of that i used to do a lot of walking outside i cannot really do that anymore because i don't know when uh, my legs are going there's a possibility that my legs will give up on me and I don't want to be, you know, two blocks away from the house and just fall. Uh, so I'm still doing it, but I'm doing it in my living room. I just, you know, 10 minutes, I just go around. <laughs> tick, 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 tick. So just a little bit and it will help you. Uh, the other thing is, Yes, nowadays we do have a lot of uh, choices, even with the whole war on opiates, which in my opinion is just a sham. Uh, we still do have uh, pain management. Try not to, and I'm, again, I'm not trying to put myself on a pedestal. Uh, I don't ever... I have to be in a lot of pain sometimes due to weather or some other things to take the full um, recommended dose. I usually take only half. And why is that? Because, yeah, I, I still, I'm still in pain all the time, but I take enough to bring it to a bearable level. Because if i would take enough to make the pain almost completely go away then i would be stoned i mean i'll be sleeping all day long and i'm already uh fighting this fatigue that makes me sleep so long um and before i used to sleep like four or five hours in 24 and i was just fine because i was doing 
that power meditation for 15 minutes that was exactly like sleeping four or five hours uh but not to digress now i i have i'm practically when i have one of my fatigue attacks uh i'm practically narcolepsing left and right i cannot stay awake and uh, when i am able to be active only like six or seven hours out of 24 i don't want to be rendered unable to do stuff just be just to completely control the pain no in in my opinion that's another way of giving up you know so um uh, careful on that too uh try not to give up that's the the main thing do not give up um i think that that would be the the essence of everything that i'm trying to tell you on what is my secret how i can keep going on and the other thing is that all my life i was a workaholic and um, i get physically and emotionally sick if i don't do anything it really hurts me if i don't do anything if i yes i will take a day at a time you know sometimes even two if i need to if i did something that really really uh tired me to just relax you know but e i cannot go for a longer time without doing anything and uh here comes the other point and this was one of the hardest things for me to to learn through all this uh journey just because I used to be such a hyperactive person before. Um, pace yourself. And this is kind of like hand in hand with trying to craft something that is a level beyond your expertise. Pace yourself. Don't try to do too much at once because this is what I learned. Uh, yeah, I can pop an extra uh, painkiller and keep cleaning the house and mowing the lawn and doing laundry and washing the windows and finish an editorial and do that but then I will have to recover for three or four days instead of doing a little bit at a time then taking a, a nap then getting up doing a little bit uh, more it is very very bad if you don't pace yourself it's counterproductive if if that makes sense because number one you risk uh wasting more time because you need to recover and rest longer if you push yourself and number two you'll suffer setbacks because if you push yourself um, at one point you will be unable to do things right so when you feel that you're not able to focus properly anymore on what you're doing or the pain um, starts uh, getting on a high level and it might interfere with the quality of what you're doing stop just stop and rest so that is also very very important and, um, and uh, one of the and i'm going to stop with this thing because i don't want to keep you for for a long 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 time um one of the other things that maybe are part of my secret are the um, the facts consideration because um, chronic pain is one of the things that uh, impacts us, impacts our psyche emotionally on an unbelievable level. Uh, when you're talking about pain, it's one thing if you have an acute pain. Um, an acute pain that might be at a very, very high level but you know that it will wear off i mean it's like you know going on the 
over a hill. You know that once you manage to get up on top, um, after that everything will be fine. Um, and it's a completely different thing when you have a chronic pain. Even if that chronic pain is not on a super high level. For some of us it is, but even if it is not a super high level of pain, the simple fact of that pain being there, excuse me, <coughs> sorry, I, I told you I have that post nasal drip because of allergies, uh, that pain being there all the time, uh, that starts eroding us. Uh, it can make us um, one of the m most common effects is depression. Uh, it can make us uh, asocial, not antisocial, asocial. We do not want to socialize. Uh, it can make us uh, grumpy. It can make us angry it can make us resentful it is very 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 true even if we don't want to admit it but it can completely change our personality um, and because of that because it influences us emotionally we are prone to um, taking emotional decisions and these emotional emotional decisions um, might be of a uh, high importance yes I do <laughs> thank you Justin um, the decisions can be of a uh, high importance and they can influence the rest of your life or uh, they can be of a lower importance but just because there are many of them um, like a string of beads along your life they can make you even more unhappy and not only that they can make the people around you more unhappy so what I do is what's called in medical terminology there's a specific uh, type of uh, psychological uh, treatment uh, that uses these terms but it's called uh, fact checking so whenever you feel um, resentful whenever you feel and you feel that you're going to get angry and you, you're angry and you're going to do a take a decision to cut somebody from your life or to not see that person anymore or um, Oh, you don't want to help me. I'm going to get up and I'm going to do it by myself. And then you do it by yourself until you hurt yourself. And then you need a lot of recovery. Always stop. Stop and fact check. Try to see everything from a um, bystander's point of view. Not a lot of people, a lot of specialists will tell you, try to see it through the eyes of the other person. Uh, I personally don't think it's a good thing because we do have the tendency to subjectivize the other people and that is we are not going to see the situation through the eyes of the other person. We are going to see the situation uh, how we wish the other person to see it, if that makes any sense. So, try to look at what's going on from the eyes of a bystander, from somebody who has nothing to do with the whole situation. Uh, just because we have this uh, chronic pain and just because it wears us down, we might be more sensitive to certain things. Uh, experiences in a lifetime make people more sensitive to certain things and uh, I am prone to that I'm not a, a saint I'm not a perfect person to, to give you an example because I'm a breast cancer survivor every time Facebook puts on my news feed a bras ad I catch on fire <laughs> 
I'm not I'm not kidding you you know because I find it exceptionally rude that somebody has chosen me as their target you know for their bra I mean what the heck uh, so as I said the sum of our experiences will make us very sensitive uh, so every time you feel that you're on the verge of making an emotional decision try and stop and uh, assess the facts from a bystander's point of view uh, I know it's hard and I know that there are things that rile us up and it's hard to stop to actually stop and assess the facts but try to do it and you'll see how much easier your life gets um, not only because of that but you realize um, if you start doing that you realize that if you don't try to bring the facts to the nominator of a bystander you allow yourself to be emotionally hurt by things that shouldn't hurt you so it's a form of uh, protecting yourself it's a form of uh, defending yourself if you want by not it's the same as you know don't let uh, people's words and opinions of you uh, affect you i know this is a much larger subject and maybe i'll talk about it sometime but uh, try and do this fact checking because uh, you will notice how much better your life will be and your emotional well-being will be and that also reflects in how you're able to cope with the chronic pain with the degenerative condition with uh, whatever your disability might be with getting older uh, so that is another little trick that i use and i'm trying to always be as i said from the point of view of the bystander and not only that but i try to take a step back and see is this really affecting me is this affecting my well-being is this affecting my uh, personal uh, financial situation and and things like that because i always said um, you probably have seen me <laughs> getting into arguments on online with various kind of trolls but uh, my thing is if somebody doesn't pay my bills doesn't put a ro roof above my head doesn't put food on my table doesn't take care of me and didn't earn my respect why would i care about what they think of me <laughs> you know it's like why <laughs> it's non-important so uh, try to assess that as well um and the other thing when i'm talking from the point of view of the bystander bring the facts um a lot of times uh, as i was saying because of the experience you've had because of the you know we are most of the chronic pain sufferers are uh, will pretty much catch on fire if somebody would just come and say oh yeah you need to think positive or i know or um did you try such and such remedy because that will help you with your pain and of course we kind of get upset it's like dude i'm doing all kinds of research i'm doing everything that i can i don't need you you have no idea what i'm going through you know uh try and think about the fact that number one people who do not go through what you're going through cannot really understand what you're going through uh generally speaking only somebody who had a specific type of cancer and a specific type of treatment will be able to fully understand 
and not even fully, you know, up to a point, somebody else who has or had the same type of cancer and the same type of treatment, and that's valid for all everything. Uh, number two, that person, and this is usually valid in 90% of the cases, uh, that person is actually, how can I say it, well-intentioned. They don't say that with the um, purpose of uh, hurting you or with the purpose of uh, uh, dismissing or trying to make your issues seem insignificant or anything. No, they genuinely tell you that because that's what they read and they tell you that because they think it is an important piece of information that might actually help you. They are very well meaning. And nevertheless, you get all upset and then you will uh, retort in anger or in, and you might ruin a, a relationship. Of course, they are idiots that you don't, you know, <laughs> I mean, you know what I'm talking about. Um, but generally speaking, as I said, the, the assess the facts uh, helps a lot in everything into your emotional well-being into taking not taking emotional decisions into interpersonal relationships um and then the other thing that is also very very helpful as i said we generally tend to tend to be asocial um and we are lucky that we live in a time when um information and connection is so developed if we were like 30 years ago um our only means of connecting with other people would have been the telephone or the letters if we would have lived 50 100 years ago it would have been we would have been just hermits not able to do anything but now we can connect with the whole world um and we can establish a lot of socializing and a lot of help and talking about the information and the technology another thing that helps a lot with chronic pain um and don't take it lightly because it is a very very um, good therapy for your emotional well-being try to shift from uh, feeling frustrated because a lot of times there's a lot of frustration about oh I was able to do so many things before and now I cannot do anything so I'm going to just be on my pity pot and wail and whine and not do anything to fix it N uh, try to shift from that uh, the daydreaming don't start daydreaming about Oh, I was able to do that and I have such a wonderful memory. Let me take my photo album and see, I was able to do that. I would love to go there again, but I cannot. Oh, poor me. No, try instead of um, daydream in a fictional universe. Uh, watch documentaries, watch fantasy movies, try to daydream yourself as not having the issues that you have and being in that place when traveling when whatever um, it might sound a little bit weird but I can assure you it is a very very good uh, therapy um, yoga can help uh, many in doing this and meditation I personally cannot do yoga because of my the muscles I don't have anymore don't allow me to make to do most of the poses but um, if you start trying to uh, to do a little bit of meditation uh, trying to to do a little bit of daydreaming but as I said in virtual uh, situations not in situations in which you would uh, trigger a happy memory from your past 
that will trigger unhappiness in the present. Does that make sense to you? So avoid that kind of, uh, of thinking and instead get yourself in a fantasy land if you want. You know, in a fantasy land in which you have no... Uh, just, you know, think about swimming in the Caribbean. Or, um, I don't know, walking through the jungle. Or fishing. Or something that you haven't done before. Something that you don't have a happy memory about that would trigger unhappiness in the present. And that is also quite important. So, I'm not going to keep longer than this because I've been already on for like over an hour, an hour and 15 minutes. And if I keep going, then I'm going to start being in pain. But um, if you have any other issues that you, you would like me to discuss in this monthly chat, go ahead and uh, just message me. And uh, let me know if you think that my little pep talk uh, helped you. And uh, I would be happy to, to talk more about this and about other issues as well. And I am looking forward to being able to finally, hopefully, hopefully catch up on stuff. As I said, I have a little bit to work more on the Bangles tutorial. And this one is also almost edited with the results of the tiny Pandora unboxing. Uh, so it will be a very short thing. Probably I'll show it in the community tab as I did before with the, um, with the insect eye beads. Um, and uh, that would be pretty much, pretty much it. And thank you for being here with me. And again, you know how to contact me. I'll see you all tomorrow during the, we'll make dragonfly wings and maybe cicada wings and something. And um, that is it. Thank you so much. And I'll see you all tomorrow. Have a wonderful, wonderful Saturday. I love you.